Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question that is how to really heal from and enter into life feeling whole and complete and that you're not missing something. Now, as a result of certain life experiences, sometimes you feel un unequipped to do the job, especially when we talk about being in a new relationship or relating to new types of people or having relationships in a new dynamic, a new relationship front or frontier, a way that you're really in a different mindset or you're taking on a different role, if you will, or a different I am or identity, which is distinguished by new boundaries and new standards. And one of the important things that are required is that you are vulnerable. So there is a balance that needs to occur between, when you're looking at moving forward in terms of your letting your guard down or being vulnerable. Now, a lot of people have questions as well when moving forward about how do I remain protected. So when we talk about boundaries between yourself and others, we're talking about physical boundaries. We're also talking about internal boundaries. So physical boundaries are your own personal space. So if someone comes in and bumps you or gets in your personal space, you feel crowded out you feel that you know they're un disrespectful. The same thing occurs with internal boundaries, which are a result really where your thoughts and your feelings and your spirit is. So oftentimes when people are in relationships where they've been manipulated or betrayed, there's a violation of both of these boundaries, not only physical space, but a sense of sort of that internal I am that has been violated. So to learn how to protect that and let go and enter into new relationships is to understand really what both of these are and what it looks like to protect these. So physical boundaries, you know, if someone isn't crouching in your space, can you step back just a moment? Can you move your desk over there? Can you please set up the light over there? Can you please move the chair? You know, I just need a little bit of breathing room might be some statements that you can make in order to declare your boundaries, your physical boundaries. Now, we can understand that in personal space is usually thought to be one arm's length away. So that is your personal space and it moves and resides with you. Now, the internal space is something that is not you know, out there, but it is definitely something in the way that you speak, your values, your opinions, your mindset, which also needs to be guarded in a similar manner. And so you can do this and protect. So your internal boundaries are your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, your values, your mindset. And what oftentimes people get caught up as um, explaining and justifying yourself. I'm this way because da, 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 you know, fighting back. There's, you have to, when people are trying to protect themselves, oftentimes they find themselves in a reactive state. Reactive meaning explaining and justifying where they've been in their life, why they feel that they, how they do, um, explaining and justifying their hair, their clothes, their diet, their job, their time, their vacations explaining and justifying. So if you have, if you feel that you're constantly explaining and justifying yourself, that is where your internal boundary is and you're trying to protect that. But when you're, when you engage in that habit, basically you're entering into a conflict consciousness. And in, in other words, deep down, you don't feel that you deserve to have these or that you um, have an issue with someone else respecting these. So when you do that, you're basically taking the bait. You're, you're entering into a conflict consciousness, which means you're having to explain yourself to somebody else 
who then takes authority over you. Does this make sense? <clears throat> and so you are the one who has jurisdiction and authority over yourself and your emotions. When we talk about sort of backing up, how do you then back up and protect that internal boundary? Let's back it up here a moment. Okay, you can say that and, and get yourself some breathing room, some personal space for your own thoughts in order to have these flow and not be cut off because you're in a relationship with someone who you feel combative or has got that sort of reptilian part of you, that fight or flight, that limbic system on high alert. So to be in relationships comfortably, you really need to be able to be vulnerable and emerge from this high alert status. In other words, here they come again. You know, here's this person who triggers me. You want to process and work through those triggers on your own so that they become irrelevant, that you're unaffected. You know, this person no longer sort of hits your personality or your space in a negative way. In other words, it no longer becomes toxic. To get to that level so that it's no longer toxic, you have to do some of this internal work and become in touch with and sensitive to these issues that they tend to push your buttons on and have that work through beforehand. I call this sort of like forecasting. In other words, meaning that to understand that when you when you go around either specific people or specific intimate relationships or family relationships or work relationships, whatever it is that's the trigger for you, to understand really what your triggers are and the why, the cause that creates the effect and work through it so and to sort of flesh it out so that this trigger no longer becomes a trigger to you. It, no, it becomes like water off of your back versus a stinging, tense situation, you know, where you're feeling like you're on pins and needles. You know, you can't sleep. This is anxiety. These are old wounds. These are old hurts that you're still allowing to recycle within your system. Rememorize, rememorizing them and rehearsing them and replaying them over and over again. Oftentimes people feel very out of control, they feel very agitated, and they feel that they can't really get through what then becomes a wall in their relationship. Um, so a bound, rather than a boundary, it becomes a wall and they can't really sort of be vulnerable to people. They can't be on a level that is communicative and effective. So in order to let this go and make yourself vulnerable without being unprotected means that you have to identify those internal as well as those extra, or you know, I guess I want to say physical versus internal boundaries and that you understand and are in touch with both that you can put those up, you know, like drawing a shade on your window, if, you know, um, or opening them up. So I want you to be able to have that degree of control, a shade or a blind or a curtain or something like that. So to be able to pull it back a little bit and put it back down, to have that mechanism and to understand what that looks like physically and then emotionally. So I think it's a lot easier for people to understand the physical and, and then to get a feeling for what it's like on the internal. So physical space. So you know what it's like when someone isn't really giving you physical space. They're encroaching on your space. They're cramping your style. Um, they're going into your living space. They're, um, there's an energetic sort of violation energy in something that you can feel. So physically as well as emotionally. So it's much easier to see it in the physical world and protect that. So in other words, one arm's length away you know, how do you then make that internally? So realize that there's a similar pattern that's going to take place physically as well as emotionally. So being able to declare, erect, and then protect and enforce your own physical boundaries needs to be replicated internally, which means your ability to communicate, uh, to stand up for yourself, <clears throat> um, uh, 
command and confront your need to be respected and not just catering to the upset of another because oftentimes that can be irrational especially when someone is manipulating you so let's give a quick example you know I need a little bit of space here I need some breathing room can you back up your chair can you move that light can you uh, tilt the desk this way um, can you close the door can you you know open uh, I'm gonna leave my door open you know these you know can um, can you move over a scooch um, I need you know I'm feeling a little crowded here okay so those are some examples of um, enforcing your your physical space your personal space which oftentimes people have had violated and feel that they don't really even own that anymore so it's important for you to take that back and take back your power same thing with your internal boundaries so you know this is um, you know so whether it's your thoughts your feelings your behavior just decisions this was my calling this is what I need to do um, this is my belief system this is what I value this is what I follow this is what I aspire to this is what was required of me you know so explaining and not only you know justifying and getting back but being able to show where your boundaries are through your communication is so important so that you don't feel that you constantly are triggered and having to explain and justify yourself so <clears throat> and oftentimes this is with people who don't have perhaps a certain degree of emotional intelligence in other words they don't have if they don't have empathy if they are judgmental um, if they're highly critical um, highly critical constantly you know constant criticism is nothing it's not meant for you it is meant for them it's a it's a means of manipulating others so realize <clears throat> you know then you have to back other people down as if like an emotional bully you know let's you know let's cut it with the constant criticism you know I'm I'm not standing for this this is not to be tolerated in any sort of discourse this I am putting an end to this this is ending this is you know this is just coming out of sort of inner rationality here so being able to communicate to what degree you need to kind of balance out some emotional inequities or emotional imbalances or irrationalities with people um, and realizing that you need to be vulnerable which means showing yourself and demanding and I want to see demanding and expecting respect so you need to clear the air by demanding respect so sometimes there needs to be what I would call care front to care front somebody or not really confront but to do it in a, a caring manner and you know give it to the big picture so in other words this is not a, just about you <clears throat> this is about sort of universal laws or laws of human nature or human rights really when it comes right down to it to have your personal space both physically and internally and being able to sort of express this is so very crucial but to deliver the message and to not go back and forth but it is what it is and so to do that um, to make these statements and then physically back up will help your message get through in other words to show and help inform and educate those people who are not emotionally intelligent who or who are manipulative who want to go for the win who want to always be the one who is right in other words it's a one directional relationship so to bring to light some of these realities you know this is not one directional here you know I think you know there's a little bit of perception here to clear the air um, and to say you know not everybody has the same journey in life so to make statements between 5 and 15 words will help to sort of clear the air and help you to declare those not only physical space boundaries but those internal boundaries to protect 
what's going on within, which is very important, especially if you are in a degree where you still need to interact or you're still trying to settle things or work things out. So the person might be physically present or they might not be. Maybe this is just sort of a wound that you are still dealing with and grappling with. So you need to have compassion, forgiveness, and empathy for yourself and experience your okayness and your wholeness before going out and taking that into the world. In other words, it has to be a lesson learned and it has to be something that you stop procrastinating on so that you're completely 100% clear with yourself, excuse me, I have an itch, <clears throat> with what you will tolerate and what you won't tolerate. These are what you call standards. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I have an itch. It is hay fever time. Um, we're getting from the, uh, the summer into the fall. So anyway, for you who have been with me for some time, know that I have hay fever, etc. So anyway, so being able to work through these issues in and of yourself is important so that when situations come up, either getting together or in your mind's eye, if you're still sort of grappling with this and you're finding it hard to enter into new relationships, it's because you haven't incorporated and had a good working ability with boundaries, both, both physical and emotional. These have to be user friendly for you, meaning that you are able to either deliberately protect in other words, it's going to take some deliberate effort. And then eventually, as you have repetition and experience, it will become automatic and you won't take offense. You won't be offended. So you have to become unoffendable, becoming unoffendable. When you embrace yourself for who you are and really understand that the, we're going to get right back to it, that the divine intelligence runs through you and to live in that space means that you work through it and that you don't have to get into a quarrel with another individual to live by that understanding in that societal universal law. So it's to understand that you work through this, that you're in touch with this and that you understand these values yourself so that when they come up, you, it's just an automatic, you know, when they, the, the constant criticism, when this comes up, <clears throat> knowing that you've worked it through, that this is a, a, a method of manipulation to get you to feel bad, the old guilt, the old shame, the old self doubt, don't enter into that space. So that's a physical, physiological, as well as psychological, neuro-linguistic, and spiritual space. So knowing what you own and how big it is, which is important for you to understand, which means your internal scope of emotions and values and to be okay with this. In other words, you're honoring something within you. It is, and to have that degree of honoring and self-respect and to be able to, to declare and protect in five to 15 words so you don't get into a heated discussion, but that it is declared just as if you were saying, can you move over, you know, a, a smidgen? It's the same thing. I want you to get really good at being able to do that with your emotions as well. So if someone's coming up with a criticism, you don't launch into, oh no, you don't, you know, and then getting into the, or the uh, over obligating, falling for the guilt, falling for the manipulation. Um, you know, there was a, a great episode on the, uh, series friends. If you remember that was back in, I think the two thousands, a real hit series, they've got it on Netflix, but there's a series where, um, now Chandler, which is one of the ma male characters, um, then kind of takes over Joey's girlfriend and he doesn't want to tell her, even though they fell in love and it was meant to be. He feels bad, so he goes and buys a whole new living room of furniture. So here's the over-obligating. You know, it's a sitcom. And Joey's like, you know, you don't have to do all this. 
you know, to what degree are you then using defense mechanisms to protect that internal space and to protect your vulnerability? So you have to be able to like a curtain open and close it, you know, and so you have to be able to exert and you have to have a go-to statement that, that protects you just as if, and you set it in the same matter of fact tone, move over a smidgen. Um, you know, the same way. So protecting your internal boundaries. Um, you know, people have different life callings. And so it is. And be at peace. You know, so you need to be able to make statements like that. That you are, you know, not everybody is the same. Not everybody watches the same shows. Not, you know, you can't control somebody in this manner. It'll only make you unhappy. So, so showing empathy, compassion, the bigger picture will help you to protect your internal boundaries as well as those physical boundaries. So with repetition and experience, it'll become quite natural and you'll be amazed at how once you enforce it, meaning once you make these statements where the statements have not been made before to those people, they'll be able to back off and say, okay, this person knows what they're talking about. They need breathing room. They need personal space. This is, you know, who they are. This is part of their individuality and it makes sense now. So if you can do that in a manner and deliver it in five to 15 words so that it makes sense to people, you'll be able to enter into and have the confidence to enter into new relationships as well as taking care of yourself in existing relationships where this has been a area of being tested or being triggered so that it, once you work through it, it'll no longer be an issue. It will no longer upset you. It becomes a natural, normal request, not intended to hurt your feelings or hurt others, just as you can expect or understand that someone else might say, Hey, can you move over an inch? It's the same thing with their, thoughts and their internal boundaries. So begin to acknowledge others, respect others, and then acknowledge and respect your own. And I think you'll find that it's easy that once you do this, you'll get a sense of that, what it takes, that internal mechanism, even though we're talking about something that's highly intangible, it's something that needs to be able to translate into actually doable steps. So you're able to back down people who encroach on your personal space or who are manipulating through constant criticism and judgment. Don't fall for that. Know it for what it is, but know how to declare your boundaries in five to 15 words that gets them to pay attention and resonate and make sense. So you won't have to go through that again and again and again. It's your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out. Have a beautiful day.